Actually, I have to be honest with you, I don't like that intro. When our people are preparing for some uh, intro video for me, I tell them, please don't include that part. That part that has to do with my uh, academic background. The reason being, number one, it puts pressure on me. Because suddenly these people who don't know me from zero, like, they will think that I'm intelligent and I'm not. One of my classmates, when we graduated from seminary, told me this, Hi Ram, you finished. Summa cum laude. It's really by grace, no? And I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I got saved by grace, studied by grace, pastoring by grace, moving in signs and wonders by grace. It's all by grace. Hallelujah. <laughs> Aren't you thankful it's all by grace? So yeah, if I may request all the house lights to be on, please. Ayoko nang para ako nag I cannot be singing. Um... All right, now before I proceed, number one, I have been requested to do a talk on healing. So uh, I will be doing some mes message on healing. God just wants to pour out so much into our lives. You know what? It's last days. Everybody say last days. And God says in the last days, He will pour out. Who's excited to be living in the last days? God is pouring out. God is not pouring half. He's pouring out like He is pouring out everything that He's got for us all today. Who's excited for that? All right. So um, on my way here, I was driving. And I was driving. And I was driving. And then I was praying. And I, I, as I was praying, I was praying this. Because we were listening, my wife and I, we were listening to this um, praise song by Rick Pino. And um, it has to do with God being a good daddy and that he wants to give the bread to his children. And so I started praying. I said, God, you have to give your children their bread. And who knows, the Bible says and Jesus said that when we ask God for bread, he won't give us a stone. Amen? When we ask for bread, He won't give us a stone. So I saw God in a vision that He is starting to give bread to everybody in the house. That includes you. And God was just giving away. Hindi nga pandesal yung pinapamigay niya. He was giving away loaves of bread, like long loaves of bread to everyone. God is giving you His bread. God is giving you His bread. And that includes the bread of healing. Tell the person next to you, God will give you your bread. Who's excited for that? Who's excited for that? Alright? So let's pray. Holy Spirit, I confess I don't have anything to give, but you have everything to give. Like what we heard from Joyce, without Jesus, I am nothing. We are all nothing, but with Jesus, we have everything. We are complete. And right now, we are just asking, Holy Spirit, that you will just come and you will just give away the good bread of the Father for everybody to receive. In the name of Jesus, can you just lift up both hands to the Lord right now and just say, Lord, I receive my good bread. I receive my good bread for you're a good Father. Now start thanking Him. Start thanking Him. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen, Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap of praise. Woohoo! I want to know, I just, I just want to have an idea. Who among you here has heard me speak before? Can you just lift up your hand? Who has not heard me speak before? Can you lift up? Yeah, our, our foreigner friends, of course. Um, <clears throat> now, just a brief backgrounder on who I am and what my ministry is. I got to know the Lord back in 1985. I was born into a Protestant family. I'm a third-generation Protestant. My grandfather, he's a, 
he was a Protestant pastor. But I got born again only in 1985, and that would be at the age of 16, 17. And when I got born again, it was through Campus Crusade for Christ. And then in 1989, I started in full-time ministry. So uh, now it's 2019. It's been 30 years that I have been pastoring. Yeah. And um, so I started pastoring 1989. But I must admit, from 1989 until 2006, I was not moving in the ministry of healing. Now, for some of you, you may know that we have been moving in the ministry of deliverance, and that's true. I started moving in deliverance in 1994. Yeah, in 1994, but it was only in 2006. Yeah, 2006 that I started moving in the ministry of healing. Now, you may be wondering, why didn't I start moving in healing as early as when I started pastoring in 1989? Why, why did I have to wait until 2006? Now, here's the reason. Number one, it had to do with this understanding, this theological understanding, and I would say biblical understanding or misunderstanding would be a better word, that the ministry of healing is only for a few gifted people in the body of Christ. So I was looking at myself and I saw myself as disqualified from moving in healing because I, I looked at myself as somebody who's not gifted in healing. Like I have prayed for a few people and I have never seen any dramatic healings and because I've never seen any dramatic healings, I did not take it that it was a gift that God has given to me. So from 85 when I got born again and 89 when I got into full-time ministry until 2006, I was not really pursuing healing. It was not like when I see a person who's sick, I would say, can I pray for you and then believe God for some instant healing. I was not into that. I, I would not do that because of that biblical, theological understanding or misunderstanding secondly i was not doing that because i was thinking also that if i get to pray for somebody and then people see me praying for that person and that person does not get healed i'm thinking i would be embarrassed tagalogin ko mapapahiya ako if i get to pray for somebody and the person does not get healed I'm thinking that people would look at me and say, Ah, so Pastor Hiram is not really anointed. He's trying hard. He's just doing it. But truth of the matter is he's not gifted. And so people will think that I am just doing something that God has not gifted me with. And then something happened in 2006. So what happened? There were two people. I tried to cut this short. Two people that God used. It Wake me up to the reality that God can actually use me in the ministry of healing. The first person would be a prophetess in the United States. Her name is Jill Austin. So Jill prayed for me, prophesied over me, laid her hand on me, and then I fell on the floor and I started seeing a series of visions. And in those visions, I saw myself praying first for one person, and then I was praying for three, four people, and then I was praying for 10 people. And then I saw myself praying in city gymnasiums for hundreds of people. And I was seeing many people are getting healed. And then finally, I saw myself praying. And this was at the Araneta Coliseum. I, I know because I've been there before and I saw it. I said, this looks, as I was seeing the visions, I was lying there on the floor. And I was seeing the vision. I said, that looks like Araneta Coliseum. And so I was seeing all of this. And if you can just imagine this, this happened in California, in Pasadena. I was lying on the floor, and I was seeing all this. I was praying for people, and people were getting healed. And I said, this is funny. This is funny. So I was there on the floor, and I was just laughing. I, I was there. I was laughing. I was laughing with the Lord, not laughing at the Lord, but I was laughing with the Lord like, God, this is just crazy. This is good. I like what I'm seeing, but this is not reality for me because I have never moved in the ministry of healing before. But then I saw all of this. It was just moving rapidly. 
picture after picture after picture of me praying for people. And then the second person that got to pray for me in, in that particular conference would be a prophet by the name of James Gall. Now, James Gall declared this to me. He says, an anointing, you have an anointing for national revival. Now, that, what's the term that we use now? That shook me. Na shook ako. Because it was too big. If you know me, I have always seen myself as a pastor. A pastor of the church that God has entrusted to me. But for me to even be dreaming about being an instrument of God for national revival, that's not in my picture. That's not in the radar. Like, I never saw myself as somebody that God would be using on that scale that would touch a nation for revival. But then again, when he said that, it was like something just opened wide my spirit. It was so big that I started to cry. And I said, God, you know I cannot. On my own, you know I'm too small. On my own. But then again, if this is what you want, then use me. Well, it's 2019 now. And going back from 2006 to 2019, I must say, that all of the pictures that I have seen in the vision that God gave me have all happened. All of them. Hallelujah. Like me praying for somebody and then the, that person got healed. And then me praying for three, four people, ten people inside our church. That has taken place, still does take place. Me going into city gymnasiums, provincial gymnasiums, and even gymnasiums outside of the Philippines, they have all happened. And the Araneta Coliseum, it has happened. Now, why do I tell you this? Oh, by the way, the Araneta Coliseum thing, you know how it happened? I got a phone call from a Catholic charismatic group. And they said, Pastor Hiram, can you be one of our speakers in our Lenten retreat? I said, um, where will this be? At the Araneta Coliseum. And I said, God, that's the vision. And then they said, can you speak on a Good Friday? Because we want it to be shown on national TV. I said, on a Good Friday, I'm sorry, I cannot. I will be in Davao. When are you coming back? I'm coming back Saturday. All right then, Saturday. What time will you be here? Um, my flight, I will be there by 3 p.m. Okay. Can you be at the Araneta Coliseum by 5 p.m.? Because we want people to see how God truly heals and this will be shown on national TV. I said, of course, sure. So I arrived at the Araneta. When I was there in the backstage, they told me, mm, Pastor, um, we're really sorry, but we cannot introduce you as a pastor. Because, you know, it's a Catholic charismatic event. So, uh, you cannot really be introduced as a pastor because they're thinking everybody who stands on stage, they're supposed to be part of our group. So can we just introduce you as brother? Oh, no problem with brother. You can call me brother. You can call me mister. You can call me Hiram. You can call me Pangilinan. You can call me sir. Just don't call me sister. There's a problem right there. And I said, Sure. So I was there and I got to preach and I said, God, you are so faithful. All of the visions that you have given to me, they have all happened. They have all come to pass and the story continues on. Hallelujah. Now, why do I tell you this? I tell you this because the, the, pro, the pronouncement, the prophecy that was given to me is that the healing ministry the Signs and Wonders ministry will be used by God to bring about national revival. And this is why I carry this wherever I go. Wherever I go. Like, God would be sending me to some, some poverty-stricken province. Or God may be sending me to a first world city or a first world country. And, and God is still releasing that same anointing. He wants to use signs and wonders to bring about revival in the places that otherwise would not open up to the preaching of the gospel. Tell the person next to you, God wants to use you. And here's my assignment, people. Listen up. Here's my assignment. 
I believe that God has given me a particular assignment and that is just to stir up the body of Christ so that every person who calls himself or herself a believer in Jesus can actually move in the ministry of healing. Now, you may be just like me before. You may be here today and you're thinking like, God cannot use me in the ministry of healing. I'm not gifted. God cannot use me in the ministry of healing. I'm just a church member. I'm just one of those who get to sit on the pew in our church. Like I'm not one of the anointed ministers. But let me tell you this. God wants to use every believer to move in the ministry of healing. Tell the person next to you, God wants to use you. Naniwala ba? I remember posting on Facebook a status message that says this, I dream of raising up an army of healers from ordinary believers. When I posted that, oh my goodness, so many people just responded to it like, 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 heart, heart, heart. Nobody, re nobody responded with an angry face. No sad face, just like, 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 heart, heart, heart. And then some comments like, count me in, Pastor. I want to be a part of that army. Um, uh, um, uh, I am believing with you, Pastor. Like, it just went. Trrr. Like, in a few minutes, so many people responded to it that at the end of the day, more than a thousand actually responded to it. But then, one person, and he's a professor in the seminary. Somebody that we really respected. Somebody that we really looked up to. And that somebody that you don't want to argue with because you know he's really good. He's intelligent. He knows the Bible. He's very brilliant in theology. And he says this, Hey Hiram, that's a noble idea. But then again, you need to understand, healing is not for everyone. It is a gift that God has given only to a few specific people in the body of Christ. So he responded with that. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, why did he have to comment on this thread? Like so many people were just so passionate, so on fire, like, yes, amen, count me in, pastor, like, 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 love, love, love. And now he is just quenching the fire. I mean, those guys who responded their hearts we're on fire already. And now he's saying, sorry Hiram, noble idea, but it's unscriptural. So I was thinking, God, do I respond to this guy? Because if I respond to him, he may respond again. And I told you, he's brilliant, he's intelligent. I don't want to pick a quarrel with him, at least not on Facebook. So I said, no Lord, I'm not going to respond to him. But then Holy Spirit was telling me, if you don't respond to him, those people who would like to be a part of the army of healers would think he's correct. And so now they won't want to move in the ministry of healing anymore. They don't want to be recruited into the army of healers anymore. So you'd better respond, not for your sake, but for the sake of everybody else who wants to be used by God in the ministry of healing. So I said, all right, Lord. Okay, so I'll reply. So I started typing. <clears throat> I know where you're coming from, sir. You're coming from 1 Corinthians 12, where the Apostle Paul said that the Holy Spirit has gifted some with the gifts of healing. But I'm not coming from the Apostle Paul. I'm coming from Jesus who said in Mark 16 that these signs will accompany those who believe. That we will drive out demons in His name. We will speak in new tongues. We will be supernaturally protected. And that we will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. So I typed that. Hey guys, I typed that. I just typed it. And so I prayed again, God, now grant me the boldness to press enter. Because that's a different story. 
Because I, if I press enter, then it goes into the internet world where my professor will see it. And where hundreds of others who said, Amen, I want to be a part of the army. Count me in, pastor. God, here goes. Enter. And I said, Lord, let him not reply anymore. The following morning, I opened my laptop, and then lo and behold, there was a reply from the professor, the brilliant theologian, Bible scholar. And he says this, that's a good point, Hiram, count me in. Hallelujah! <laughs> Woo! Ha! Ha! So I took that as God's go signal. Go ahead. It's a dream from heaven. It's a dream from ma it's a dream from the heart of God. He really wants that every believer will be a part of the army of healers. And I'm talking to you right now. I don't care what denomination you came from. I don't care what church you came from. I don't care what theolo theological um, um, background that you may have or whatever slant that you may have. Understand this. It is Jesus' statement. It is Jesus' statement, not my statement, not anybody's statement, not any denomination statement. It is the statement of Jesus. He says, these signs will accompany those who... Who? Who? Now, he did not say these signs will accompany those who are pastors. He did not say these signs will accompany those who are missionaries or bishops. He did not say that these signs will accompany those who occupy positions in the church. He says these signs will accompany those who believe. Who's a believer in the house? Imagine this. What if every person who calls himself or herself a believer in Jesus actually starts taking Jesus at his word and says, Jesus, you know what? I'm a newbie. I just got born again. But Lord, I don't care. I want to move in signs and wonders because you said so. I believe this with all my heart. I believe this with all my heart. We can actually hasten national revival, be it in the Philippines, or be it in Japan, or be it in Afghanistan, or be it in the United States, or Canada, wherever. We can hasten national revival if only every believer will start moving in healings and miracle signs and wonders. I was in Japan. One of my friends invited me, and he says, Bro, can you bring that message to Japan? I said, gladly. So I was there. I was in his church. And then he gave me some um, tips before I got to minister. And he says this. By the way, he says, I don't want you to get your hopes up. W what do you mean? Well, because here in Japan, you know, missiologists, the ones who are studying missions, they say that it takes 10 years for you to convince one Japanese guy about the claims of Jesus. Ten years to convince one. So if you have a church of ten people, it must have taken you a hundred years. So, <laughs> I said, seriously, yes. They will not just believe you. Your talk about Jesus, it will take lots of convincing for them to just say yes to Jesus. Okay, so I was... Surveying the area, I was looking at the church and I was looking, oh yeah, most of them were Filipinas. Filipina women. Filipino women. But there, right there at the corner, I saw some Japanese men and I said, hey bro, look, you have Japanese members. Oh, those guys, they're not really members. Oh, who are they? What are they doing here? They're the husbands of these Filipino women. They're here because they're part of the Takusa. I said, Takusa, yeah, takut sa asawa. They're afraid of their wives. So what they do, takut sa asawa means they're afraid of their wives. So what they do is they bring their wives to church, and then after the church, they bring their wives back to the house, back home. Oh, I see. So they're not really believers? No, no, they're, they, they are just good husbands. Okay. So I preached the message. Must have been about an hour preaching. 
But there was this one Japanese guy who was seated right here. And I was just so happy. Because the message, it was about an hour, and he just sat there. And I said, oh, good for this Japanese guy. He's not among those guys who are seated right there at the back. He's right there. He was like all ears listening to me. I was preaching in Tagalog. And there's an interpreter beside him. And then came the activation part for healing. And I said, whoever needs healing, I want you to stand up. And so the one sitting beside him, he was a Filipino young man. He says, stand up. And so he stands up. And I said, whoever's beside you, you will be the one to pray for that person to be healed. And the young man, the Filipino young man, looks at me. Me, I'm going to pray for him? I said, yes, you're the one standing beside him. But he's deaf. I said, he's been looking at me all this time like I'm preaching. He's looking at me. He's deaf. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, since you're the one standing beside him, you pray for him. I cannot pray for the deaf. I said, of course you can. Go ahead, pray for him. Just follow after me. Simple prayer. And he does this like in the name of Jesus, deafness begun healing flow. And this Japanese guy removes his hearing aid and he can hear perfectly. Hallelujah. And so he starts crying. And I told the Filipino young man, I said, tell him that it was Jesus who healed him. Kikuman. And I said, tell him Jesus healed him because Jesus loves him. And then, you know what? And tell him that he must surrender his life to Jesus. Let Jesus into his heart as Savior and Lord. Cut the long story short, that Japanese guy received Jesus into his heart as Lord and Savior. Not after 10 years. Not after 10 months. I would say even less than 10 minutes. Why? Because he experienced the love and power of Jesus through the healing ministry. Now, won't it be wonderful? Won't it be wonderful if all of us we have met some sick people along the way. Who, who's seen some sick people in your life? If you have not seen any sick people, you're, you're the first candidate. We're praying for you for blindness to be removed. We have encountered sick people. The question would be this. Have you ever offered to pray for them to be healed? Because you, you, you will just be surprised at how easy it is. It's so easy that when Jesus says, you will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed, it's true. Let me tell you this. There are just two requirements for every believer to move in the ministry of healing. But before that, a more basic question would be this. Who wants to move in the ministry of healing? Raise your hand. Who's super excited to move in the ministry of healing? All right. Super excited from this side. Okay. Wow, excited. Who's super excited from this side? Who's super excited from this side? Super excited from this side. Uh, I, I believe you. I believe you. Super excited from this side. Because let me tell you guys, there is nothing like it. Adrenaline starts to pump. Like, oh my goodness, there's this person walking with a cane. You don't need discernment from that. Like, God, is this person sick? There's a person on a wheelchair. Lord, is that person in need of healing? No, he's just using the wheelchair because it feels more comfortable. You see somebody who's sick, and then we call it adrenaline, but truth of the matter is it's Holy Spirit prompting you. It's time. It's time. It's time. And then you approach that person, excuse me, can I pray for you? And the person says, why? I mean, we've encountered so many of this. I was in a mall. I was walking in the mall, and here was this guy. He was with two of his friends. He was walking with with his cane, and observe my legs. He was walking like this. 
Now, he's a total stranger. But when I saw him inside the mall and I was with another friend, a pastor, one of our pastors in the church. When I saw this guy, I felt the prompting of Holy Spirit just telling me, approach him. Pray for him. And so I approached him. Excuse me, can I pray for you? Now, this would be one of those malls that would be in the higher end. So he's somewhat saucy. You know saucy? Social. All right? <laughs> you know, like Ruth or, or Joyce. So I was looking at him and I said, excuse me, can I pray for you? And so he looks at me like from head to toe, like, like, who are you? But he did not say that. And he says, why? And I said, well, because Jesus, we, he's been healing people. We've prayed for some people and some have been healed. And I believe Jesus wants to heal you. And so he says, okay. You know the okay that's not so okay? Like, okay. And I said, is it the right leg? Yeah, it's the right leg. Okay, so let's pray. In the name of Jesus, I command the right leg to be healed. And I said, check it out. He says, what do you mean check it out? See if something changed. And so he starts doing this. Well, it's not stiff anymore. Oh, you mean to say before we prayed, it was stiff? Oh, yeah, it was stiff since the motorcycle accident. And the doctor placed a metal rod from here down. Oh, so there's a metal rod. Yeah, which is why I cannot flex it anymore. It's, like, it's just like this. So he's using a cane. So I said, but it's not stiff anymore. Oh, yeah, it's not stiff anymore. Is that good? Oh, yeah, it's good. Can we pray again? Oh, sure. See the difference? See the difference? Before it was, okay, now it's sure. Now for all you know, you may have friends, you may have neighbors, you may have classmates, office mates, that you offer to pray for them for healing, and the initial response would be, okay. But when they feel the touch of God, hey, you feel something? That's the love of God, sure. They open up. And I believe that this nation will open up to the gospel if they see the healing power of Jesus. So I said, let's pray again. And now I'm thinking, oh God, so how do I pray for somebody with a metal rod? Because I've never done it before. But I know that with God, nothing is impossible. And so I said, so it's the right leg, right? Yeah, it's the right leg. So God, I was praying silently. And the Lord reminded me of that verse that says, Behold, I make all things new. So I just declared it. Right leg in the name of Jesus, all things new for you. I said, check it out. He says, what do I do? Try doing something with it that you could not do before. Observe this. It's supposed to be straight with the metal rod. And he does this. Whoa! And he looks at his friend like, hey! Dude, in Tagalog, he said, Pare! Pare! For our foreigner friends, Dude! Dude! So he was shocked. I was shocked. But I did not show it. Like, yeah. <laughs> because I'm thinking, if I saw that I was, if I manifested that I was shocked, he would say, wait, wait, wait. Why are you shocked? You're not used to this? Are you just experimenting with me? Like, what are you doing? So I said, yeah, yeah, that's the Lord. That, that's the Lord. But in my heart, I was jumping for joy. Like, whoa, God, whoa, whoa. That's so cool. But, yeah, yeah. And so he, he does this. And I said, hey, you know what? God has started something with that because you're not supposed to be doing that. I want you to go all the way. He looks at me and says, seriously, yeah, I mean, you were able to flex it. Why not go for it all the way? I mean, God was just giving me so much faith in my heart. He's going to do it. I said, go for it all the way. And so he does this. Whoa, pare, pare. <laughs> and so he says, how did that happen? I said, that's Jesus because he loves you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Just in hindsight, 
I knew it was faith. Because faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. If not for that faith, I would not say go for it all the way. Because God, if God was not there to move on my behalf, and I says go for it all the way, pare, yung bakal tumusok, to go. I said I'm sorry, just experimenting. Well, he cannot run after me. He has his cane. But seriously, I can go on and on to tell you story after story of how powerful the ministry of healing is. The ministry of signs and wonders is. And the good news is, God wants to use every believer to move in it. Amen? Imagine this. What if all of you, how many are we today? 9,754? Or 22,000? I'm sorry, okay? What if all of us will just take Jesus at His word and say, You know what, Lord? I am just an ordinary believer, but you are an extraordinary God. And I'm taking you at your word. And so I'm going to move in this. I'm going to move in faith. The next person that I see who is sick, I'm going to offer to pray for them, lay my hand on them, and see you do the impossible. Amen? And if we all do this, I believe this with all my heart, it's just a matter of time when we can see this nation revived for Jesus. Hallelujah! So, enough talk. Bible says this, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. I want that every person in this room today who's feeling anything, any pain, any sickness, any disease, you've been diagnosed with something terminal or something that's incurable, guess what? With God, nothing is impossible. If that's you, simply lang yan, sipon o cancer. Hey, Pastor, sana matapat ako dun sa sipon. Mas kaya ko yun. <laughs> Gusto ko yan. Brad, ang sakit mo. Cancer, ay, dun ka sa Pastor. <laughs> Ano sakit mo? Masakit ulo ko. Ay, pwede ka sa akin. Ha, akong bahala dyan. At least pag hindi umariya, meron akong paracetamol dito. Hey, whatever your sickness is, whatever your disease is, I want you to stand up to your feet. We're going to see God break out in this place right now. Come on, come on. Stand up to your feet. Yeah. Knee pain, shoulder pain. Money pain. That's for tomorrow. That's for tomorrow. I'm telling you. Tomorrow we're going for signs and wonders. Tomorrow we're going for signs and wonders like miracle money. We're going to go for that. We're going to go for instant height increase. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. We're going for instant weight loss. That's tomorrow. But today it's healing day. It's healing time. All right? Oh, wow. So you've been here. These past few hours, you have been tolerating that sickness or that pain. But today we say it ends in Jesus' name. Alright? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to partner with someone. Lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. Woman to woman, man to man. Go ahead. Just partner with someone. If it's possible, partner with somebody that you're not so familiar with. Partner with someone that you're not so familiar with. Quickly, quickly. All right. Nobody pray. Not yet. Not yet. Just go get a partner. Just go get a partner. Hallelujah. Okay. Who has a partner? Raise your hand. Who does not have a partner? We're not looking for lifetime partners, people. Okay. Just go for somebody who will partner with you in prayer. It's easy. Okay. Shh. Listen up. 
name the sickness. I speak to you by the authority of Jesus. Be gone now. Healing flow in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Remove your hand. Check it out. Check it out. Seriously. Check it out. Something is happening right now. Something is changing right now. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. All right. Very quickly. A, it's your turn. Turn to B. Ask him, what's your sickness? Just know the sickness. Don't go ahead of me. We're doing a different thing this time. All right? You know the sickness now? Shh. You know the name of the sickness now? Good. All right. Now, I want you to place your hand on that part. Understand this. Holy Spirit has lots of ways to heal people. You remember Jesus, He healed in different ways. Sometimes He even uses saliva. Right? So right now, shh. We're, going to, we're not going to use saliva. <laughs> but we're using the joy of the Lord. Because the Bible says that a merry heart, a cheerful heart is good medicine. Alright? You know the name of the sickness? Say this, in the name of Jesus. Sickness, name the sickness. Ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha ha. Ah ha 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 ha. From head to toe. Ah ha 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 ha. Now do it with feelings. <laughs> oh, let the heaviness lift off. Let heaviness. Lift off in Jesus' name. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Amen. All right? Check it out. Go ahead. Check it out. 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 All right? People, listen up. My time's up. But very quickly, I just want, by a show of hands, if you know you have been touched by God, you have been healed, you are at least 70% better, I want you to raise up both hands and wave them. Hey! Jesus! 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 amazed by Jesus now let me ask you one final question did I pray for any one of you did I lay my hands on any one of you you prayed for each other you know what that says that says every believer can be used by God to move in the ministry of healing hey <laughs> And Lord, we say, all the glory and all the honor we bring back to you for you are worthy. We thank you that by your wounds we have been healed and we can declare healing on the people that you bring to our paths. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, the best clap of praise. Woohoo! Hallelujah.